Argentina, the tournament favourites against the United States. It's the game that everybody wants to watch. We will start, of course, with the national anthems. Could this prove to be the tournament of shocks and surprises? Or are Argentina going to really stamp their mark on the competition in their opening game? the host Venezuela held by Bolivia who were uh, bottom in World Cup qualifying who comprehensively beat Uruguay Well, we've seen a five-star show from Paraguay against Colombia. Next, it's the favourites Argentina against the United States. It's one not to miss, and it's live next. And Tony Jones. Well, on day two, we saw defeats for Ecuador and Brazil. What then now of Argentina? Firm favourites to win the Copa for the first time since 1993. Coach Coca Basile, a two time winner, was bold enough to name his team 48 hours ago. And what a team it is! So strong that there isn't even a place in the starting line for West Ham United's Carlos Tevez on the bench. The United States have arrived here after winning the Gold Cup, coming from behind in that to beat Mexico in the final. I recognize the names of Casey Caller and Jay Demerit, but not too many of the others, eight from the MLS are in the starting lineup for Bob Bradley, their new coach, an unbeaten coach as well, 11 games he's had in charge, and as yet, the United States undefeated, Bradley having taken over after the World Cup from Bruce Arena. It was a disappointing World Cup for the United States in Germany last summer. They feel it's time to rebuild, although they do have Casey Keller in goal this evening, playing his 101st international. Lionel Messi there of Argentina. What a talent he is. Young enough to have gone to the World Under-20 Championships this summer. 12 months ago, he was at the World Cup final, Craig. Quite amazing, yes, and uh, everyone must look with great anticipation at this match. When you see the Argentinian lineup, it's absolutely fantastic. And the odds yesterday on a USA victory were nine to one, but I think when you look at the lineups, the odds would be increased now. It should be fairly orthodox victory for Argentina, but the USA will compete. That's certain. They'll give it all. Second fixture of the evening then in Maracaiba. The referee is from Chile, Carlos Chandia. There have been surprises in the tournament already. Can the United States repeat their Copa success over Argentina of 12 years ago? And then Argentina rested several of their regulars. Now the priority for Basile, their coach, is a convincing start. Without the uncertainty now apparent in the Brazilian camp. Well, Tony, it was anything but a convincing start from the USA. You know, they played the ball straight back to the goalkeeper, Casey Keller. I would like to have seen them in far more offensive, get the ball forward and, and try and press the ball in the Argentinian half. But it was a very, very, I think, tentative start. And they haven't really got a touch of the ball, although they've only played seconds in the match, but it doesn't look good for the USA. 
Argentina's last game in the build-up to this Copa America was a friendly international against Algeria, which was played at the new camp in Barcelona. It was a game that they won 4-3. They were in front inside two minutes. Carlos Tevez scoring from the penalty spot in that one. But Argentina that night did look vulnerable in defence. All three goals they conceded were either from corner kicks or free kicks. Yeah, Taylor Twelman there, jumping over the top and uh, clearly conceding a free kick. Taylor Twelman alongside Eddie Johnson attack this evening for the United States. Just listen to the roars of approval whenever Lionel Messi gets near the ball. Heinzel ready well forward for Argentina. Raquel, the lazy magician they call him. Said he was going to retire from international football last year because of the criticism he was receiving. Said it was affecting his family, particularly his mother. Hey. Now he is back for Argentina. It's an Argentinian who are desperate to win this competition. 14 times winners of the Copa America, but their last success back in 1993. In the final by Brazil three years ago. They were in front in the final until the third minute of stoppage time. Adriano equalising for Brazil. He went to a penalty shootout. And Argentina lost that just as they did at the World Cup against Germany last summer. As usual, great possession from Argentina. No hurry. Very, very patient. And, uh, you know, if we get a goal like we saw from Cambiasso after all the combination play, in the World Cup, it'll be absolutely fantastic. Mr. Van Cambiasso scored one of the great World Cup goals. 26 pass moves before he made it 2-0 against Serbia and Montenegro. And that was a game that Argentina won 6-0. It's Cambiasso on the ball. Mascherano now playing just in front of the back line of four, a vastly experienced back line of four for Argentina as usual. Here's Einstein. Now Rick Kelme. By Zanetti. Messi again. And again by Messi. Back by Varane. He'll buzz around the stadium already. That is United States number two. Marvel win the second, his first international appearance. And it's against the team who are currently ranked third in the world, Argentina. Wonderful one and two touch passing we're witnessing here. This is fantastic stuff. USA defending in their own half. Uh, you know, in basketball, they would say it would be a half court press because they're not pressing at all in the. Argentinian half, they're just uh, staying in their own half at the moment, uh, trying to get two banks of four and the two strikers to make it awkward for Argentina to thread through. Here's Einstein. Raquel May again, looking for Messi. One by Veron. Messi goes on, has time to have a look up. And it's eventually put out by Jimmy Conrad. He has got some experience, and it's much needed experience at the back for the United States. Yeah, an excellent ball across the face of the goal, but very good defending. To concede the corner was all he could do. And Jimmy Conrad, the Kansas City defender, did exceptionally well. Hello, watchful. Conrad, another member of the squad that went to the World Cup last summer. Crespo ready to make his move. Closely watched by Conrad. Map who's featuring for his country for only the third time. Win is making his international debut. Joe Demerit is featuring for the United States for only the fourth time. The defender from Watford. What a jump he's made from the Ryman League to the Copa America in just three years. Yeah, a solid performer for Watford last season, although they had a difficult season, but Demerit always 
made a very good account of himself and uh, you know he's a stalwart here in this USA defence. Mac was actually on the bench for the Gold Cup final. United States beating Mexico by two goals to one. No doubt about that, offside decision. You know, clearly offside, very good defending, as you said, Tony. The experience at the back there, they know how to hold the line when required. And most assured and comfortable at the back. And the determination always to pass the ball from back to middle to front. Already Argentina looking to the World Cup in 2010. The South American qualifying competition begins in the autumn. Is it worry perhaps that defensively they've got too many 30-somethings now? Here's Johnson. Johnson goes down. United States are claiming a penalty kick, and they've got one. Yeah, Johnson has great pace. He was going through there, and the tackle was from behind, but it uh, looked at the first glance as if the ball was played first, but it was a tackle from behind, and I'm quite convinced that he was impeded. Molito definitely charged him, and a penalty kick is the correct decision. Eddie Johnson just having his heels clipped there by Gabriel Molito of Real Zaragoza and the United States with the chance to go in front and it will be Eddie Johnson who's stepping forward to take this penalty kick. Alban Danzieri already playing the mind games. Head to head now with the United States centre forward. Yeah, this is the second penalty of the tournament. Uh, the first one, of course, in the match earlier was missed by Colombia. A great opportunity for Eddie Johnston. He's been in terrific form in the MLS. Now he has his chance to make a big, big impact at the Copa America. Johnson patient. It's Johnson against Abandanzieri. This for 1-0, and the United States are in front! Yeah, superb, cool finish from Eddie Johnson, absolutely perfect. Keeper tempted to go the other way, but he stuck it brilliantly down low to the goalkeeper's left. And no chance, excellent start, but this is going to make it a game now. Really. Nobody was expecting this. From the neutral point of view, it's the best thing that could happen. Argentina now will have to come out and show all the quality that exists in that squad of theirs. But a great start for the USA. Johnson's pace causing problems in the half of that defence. And of course, he put the penalty kick away with great assurance. In Maracaibo this evening, every goal has been greeted with a light show. We saw five for Paraguay against Colombia, so we can expect more fireworks now. The United States, with a team including eight players from the MLS, have taken the lead against Argentina, the tournament favourites. Eddie Johnson of the Kansas City Wizards, brought down by Gabby Melito, and it's Johnson who stepped forward to put the United States in front. And I think Molito was a bit rash there because Johnson, although he was clear, had a lot to do to score. But uh, he was brought down from behind, clearly impeded. And uh, the referee from Chile, no question, penalty kick. Raquel may set to take charge. He's been commenting in the South American press this week about the new tournament ball that they've got here in Venezuela says that it swerves a bit too much Raquel may set Raquel has joined the end of that United States defensive war Raquel may still not happy 
That's a beautiful ball forward by Raquel May. KMC Keller tries to make the save, but Hernan Crespo has got the equaliser. The United States lead was short-lived. Totally deceived then by the flight of Raquel May's free kick. And although Casey Keller made one attempt to keep the ball out, they couldn't stop Hernan Crespo on Argentina level. A great free kick, right from the training ground, absolutely perfect. Total deception there, everyone expecting the shot and the ball was clipped in. The first uh, touch was poor from Crespo, but his second one, once he got the rebound, it was excellent. Yeah, the defence of the USA all at sea there, but they were completely deceived by that tremendous free kick. They uh, love to see the uh, training ground move being successful in matches, and clearly they've practised that one. And of course, the delivery was absolutely perfect, and uh, not great defending, admittedly, from the USA, but a fine comeback goal, and that's what was required for Argentina. Quick response. Hernan Crespo's 33rd international goal. Only Diego Maradona and Gabriel Batistuta have scored more for Argentina. Incredible record to that. 33 goals and 63 internationals. Quite fantastic. Less than two and a half minutes between the two goals. United States taking the lead from the penalty spot and now Hernan Crespo on the back of Ricame's free kick has made it 1-1. Yeah, very quick reaction from Argentina and a uh, fine goal. Heinze played it forward first of all and Crespo put the finishing touch, he is the perfect predator there, right in front of the goal, doesn't miss opportunities like that. And just just won the Serie A title with Inter Milan. Here's Zanetta, another of the Inter contingents in the Argentinian team this evening. This is uh, Cambiasso. A strong, experienced defender, Zanetti. One of the best in the world, obviously. 106 international caps for Argentina. It's Twelman. This is able to bring the ball away. The United States were appealing for the handball, and again, Scabianse. Johnson. Fantastic skill from Raquelme. Absolutely wonderful. Here's Messi. Raquelme again. Zanetti always eager to get forward. With everyone in their own half. Cambiasa. Cambi again prepared to take centre stage. Messi. With a positive run by Lionel Messi. Over with the back of the Roberts. Again, the United States have surrendered possession quickly. start by Argentina now they've just begun to up the tempo a little bit they're on and we recall to the international side back in February after a four-year absence it was Johnson who Argentina have really found difficult to contain you know, Johnson's the ideal man if you're going to be defending a, for a large part of the match he's the excellent man for counter-attacking moves and you know the experience bustling Taylor Twelman with him 
strikers of the USA have got a capability. Scored close to 90 goals in the MLS. Eddie Johnson has scored six in his last two MLS fixtures. Looking again for Johnson. Johnson had also burst forward into that Argentine penalty area. Just to be remembered that the United States have arrived here in Venezuela, minus the majority of their gold cup team, but Argentina have some important support. Diego Maradona, who opened the tournament, and sees Lionel Messi as his heir apparent, if you like. There are plenty of similarities. We saw that wonderful goal by Messi in the Copa del Rey against Hitafi when he ran for some 62 metres. Different stage, different competition, but very similar to the goal that Maradona scored against England at the World Cup in Mexico. in the penultimate week of the La Liga season. We saw Lionel Messi touch one in with his hand and get away with it. Look at me, star for Boca Juniors when they won the Copa Libertadores just a couple of weeks ago. Player of the tournament. Yeah, wonderful, skillful player, you know, kill me, you know, it was a treat to watch them quite often. Villarreal, and, you know, absolutely outstanding. Terrific uh, use of the reverse pass. Well, he was never really happy at Barcelona. Oh, Messi who is. Merit. We've got Conrad. to admit that the USA, you know, after a very tentative start, have settled reasonably well. The, the goal they got, I think, has given them a great deal of confidence. And now they're prepared to try to play Argentina at their own passing game. And it's uh, a good contest. Varon. with the Studiantics. Conrad again doing the covering. MLS Defender of the Year in 2005. Yeah, great defending there. Right. By Veron. Done by Cambiasso. That is Casey Caller who played against Argentina when the United States Beat them 3-0 in 1995. It's also the team in 1999 when they defeated Argentina 1-0. A goal from Joe Max Moore, who had a time in England with, with Everton, of course. It has to be remembered that uh, Copper America fixture in 1995. Argentina actually took the liberty of resting one or two regulars, feeling that their place in the next phase was secured. And they ended up finishing second in their group and then playing Brazil and going out. Should win this tournament. It will be a hat trick for their coach, Coco Basile, twice successful in the Copa America previously. We also had Argentina at that World Cup when Diego Maradona was suspended. Just positive after the fixture against Nigeria. Yeah, that was the uh, 94 one won by Brazil. Uh, Good World Cup played in the USA. Here's Ayala, will be leaving Valencia for Villarreal during the summer. And by Veron, looking for Zanetti. 
Mapp was doing the covering. Yeah, Mapp settled very well. They, I think only his third international, Justin Mapp, and he has settled into the match very comfortably, and that was a very good saving tackle. Interesting to see the USA bring everyone back to defend the corner, quite common. Uh, the top flight in the game, everyone back, and you can counter attack effectively from the edge of the box without leaving a man up the field. Evening. You can see the ticker tape that's blowing across the pitch. It is a really good playing surface, however. Arla was in there. Soti Melito. Maybe another corner kick. Yeah, powerful big guy, Melito. He's got excellent provision to attack these corner kicks, Argentina. And any scraps will be put in the back of the net, as we've seen by Herman Crespo. Barucane, twisted away by Callum. Hear the shout, get out. The United States currently being pegged back. Barucane with time to have a look up and to try and deceive Callum then. I think that was his intention. It was indeed, yes. And yeah, you're absolutely right about the shout, get out. They got out exceptionally well. You know, a very well drilled uh, side, the USA. Bob Bradley's got a fine reputation. Excellent club record as a coach, now with the national team, and uh, you can see excellent organisation in this team. They know exactly what they wanted, what they wanted them to do, and uh, performing most capably so far. Bradley was given the job on a full-time basis back in the spring after taking over from Bruce Arini immediately after the World Cup. Gives chase and keeps the ball in play. Confronted now by Olsen. Good defending by Olsen. Stood his ground there, blocked the path for Heinze and free kick to the USA. And Olsen briefly had a time in England. He was at Nottingham Forest when David Platt was in charge. It's been a career which has been disrupted by numerous injuries. He broke an ankle when he was at Forest and been blighted by problems with that ankle ever since. I think since he's got his goal, uh, <laughs> up front Eddie Johnson quite frustrated because it's hardly a decent quality pass. One just now, but in a wide area, he wants the ball in the central area where he's really dangerous. Johnson dispossessed by Mascherano. What a good job he does for Argentina, as he does for Liverpool now as well. Here's Clark by Matt. Good on. Now Messi. Wednesday to bring the ball away. Bad misunderstanding there, that's a classic example of an unforced error. Playing it out of play, and it would be a much easier map, inexperienced player. Just a little more composure, because he held on to that one and perhaps played it in behind the defence. on it's a pushing Bornstein Bornstein doing well in that uh, left back position he was certainly pushed there but uh, you know he's performed capably you know, Messi was in the Argentine under 20 team who were beaten by the United States at the World Youth Championships in the Netherlands two years ago Started the tournament on the bench for Argentina, ended up with the golden shoe and the player of the tournament award. Yes, he'll still be eligible for uh, the one that's 
currently underway in Canada, the World Under 20 Championship. Uh, but uh, obviously he's got elevation to the national side and it's great to see him off a very talented player. Somebody will be playing there for the United States is Freddie Adu, who was only 18 at the start of June. So much expected from him, of course, in recent years. Born striker who came to prominence as a 16-year-old at the World Under 17 Championships. Good decision by the assistant there. Clearly offside. The USA again holding the line. It's a risky tactic at times, but uh, they seem very well coordinated. And I know that a lot of work's put into that uh, on the training pitch. Uh, because Bradley, the coach, Bob Bradley, highly regarded in the USA coaching scene and uh, he's got the well drilled at the back. There's more Copa America action on Saturday, Bolivia versus Uruguay, that's at 8.30 on Sky Sports 1, two games on Saturday evening, that's followed by Venezuela versus Peru, the next fixtures in Group A. So far, it has been an absorbing tournament. Brazil losing their opening fixture. We've seen Paraguay in good form against Colombia earlier this evening. Peru beating Uruguay as well in their opening fixture. And the hosts of Venezuela surprisingly held by Bolivia. State squad were uh, taking close interest in that Venezuela versus Bolivia fixture because uh, Jamie Morano, who scored for Bolivia against Venezuela, is with DC United now. Teammate of Ben Olsen and also Bobby Boswell, who's on the bench this evening. Yeah, had a bit of jersey pulling there. Without question, and uh, Justin Mapp penalised. Masterana. And by Raquelme. Raquelme again. And nearly got Cambiasso in. So many blue jerseys there when they. Uh, because Argentina build up very carefully but slowly it gives the USA time to get back into a good defensive shape and it's a narrow back four when the ball gets into the front third and it's been most effective so far. It's just an to keep the ball in play. so many of their Gold Cup winning squad. Tim Howard of Everton, of course, and Gicioni Ewu, who was with Newcastle United on loan from Standard Liège. Landon Donovan of the LA Galaxy, one of David Beckham's new teammates, not considered for this Copa America tournament. Yeah, the Fulham boys, Bocanegra, Dempsey, not That's considered right. either. So, you know, it's, it's a strange looking USA side, but they've performed uh, most effectively so far. And that opening goal gave them great heart and confidence. Yeah, the Ram Sinti's Jonathan Spector and uh, Frank Simic and also Demarcus Beasley who was on loan to Manchester City from PSV Eindhoven and will be playing, one assumes, in Scotland next next season. So to join Glasgow Rangers provided that they can sort out his work permit. Here's Johnson. He's a Rabban Danzieri. by Raquel Mick. Here's Twelman. Now Johnson. Twelman goes down in the United States. 
have a free kick conceded by Javier Mascarana yeah it was a very very tidy one too there and uh, Mascarana did concede the free kick but it, it was a great opportunity there good play nice layoff from Eddie Johnson into the path of his striking colleague Taylor Twelman but uh, Mascarano stopped the attack at the uh, expense of this free kick. Twelman and Matt, the two over this free kick. Adam Danzieri has showed his vulnerability in that game that Argentina won against Algeria 4 3. Steps away. And the effort was disappointing. Threaded wide by Benny Feilheber. Yes, I think he actually missed it that one. The idea was there, but he didn't clip it the way we hoped to do so. And it was a tame finish, a promising situation. Well, has shown he can do it when he wants to. He scored the winner for the United States when they came from behind to win the Gold Cup against Mexico in Chicago. A volley from outside the penalty area. I think that was good use of the advantage rule there. It looked to be an offside decision, but to wisely to allow play to continue. The assistant kept the flag down, acknowledged the situation with his colleague, the referee, and play continued. The interpretation of the rule now is that, of course, the player who's attacking has to touch the ball before the flag is raised. Yes. It's been a good showing this by the United States in the first half. Boosted by that early penalty goal. Eddie Johnson scoring after he'd been fouled by Gabby Melita. Roman Crespo getting the equaliser for Argentina. Argentina with plenty of possession. United States at the moment holding firm. Can they deny Messi? Messi's the one man with a bit of spark here. He clearly indulges in a good change of pace there. It's quite a methodical almost pedestrian build-up by Argentina but when it gets to Messi more than anyone else uh, the pace changes they're on and they return to Argentina to enjoy Apertura title success last year at the age of 32 Calme was looking for Crespo. Here Calme. He's trying to release Zanetti, who made a positive forward run. Yeah, good to see Zanetti acknowledging the attempted pass there. It was a back-spinning ball from Raquelme. He's very good at that, but uh, Zanetti just couldn't get it in time. It's Bob Bradley, the United States coach. It's not a bad record, is it? 11 games unbeaten so far. In the MLS with Chicago Fire, he was head coach at Chivas before taking over the national squad. Well, I think his job's under threat. America giving him an opportunity to look at some of the players who are starting to emerge from the college scene and making their mark now in the MLS. 
turned out in a friendly against China at the start of June, just before the Gold Cup began. We're seeing Raquel getting deeper and deeper to receive the ball, and I'm quite sure uh, Basile, the coach, would want him to be receiving it further upfield in a more dangerous, threatening position. Here he is, way back deep in his own half. OK, he delivers a good pass, but you want the telling pass from further forward. Argentina next face, Colombia, with about 3 0 in the semi final three years ago. That's on Monday. Final fixture in the group phase is against Paraguay. Now by Conrad. Here's Johnson. Another strong run this by Eddie Johnson. Twelman waits. Now Clark. Heber. Idea was good, the reverse ball was well intended there, but the execution just not as perfect as he as would have wished. But a uh, good promising move there from the uh, USA. Neither goalkeeper had much, has, had much to do. In fact, Casey Keller, I think one punch corner is all he's really had to contend with, apart from losing the goal. Messi trying to give Argentina some inspiration. The United States arrived in Venezuela with a squad that included 16 who played just 10 internationals or less. 14 of the squad are aged under 25. Andy Gavin is on the bench at 20, is the youngest. Both Veron and Raquel have tried that ball over the top uh, because the USA are holding quite a high line at the back, but uh, they're doing it very effectively. It's been a sterling performance by the United States in this first half. Boosted that early goal from the penalty spot by Eddie Johnson. Argentina equalising within two and a half minutes through Hernan Crespo following the Calmez free kick. This is the game that United States were expected to suffer in and perhaps crumble. Defensively, they've been well organised and they've looked very strong. Here's Varot looking for Cambiasso. Come here again. to get away from Marvel win. Crespo with a shot, which was always going wide. Yeah, I think the preferred option would have been a ball across the face of the goal there, but, uh, you know, here's a striker, and strikers want to be selfish there, but I think a ball across the face, and uh, it might have been much more effective had he tried to pick out Cambiasso. Crespo's had three big money moves. Down at River Plate, went to Parma, he joined Lazio after that, and went to Milan, and finally Chelsea. Johnson goes down once more.
ever since that the Argentina perhaps playing only at 70% capacity. Just wonder if they start to up the tempo a little bit and start to inject a little bit of pace into their play. Maybe they can create further problems for the United States. It's difficult to break down this blanket defence, though. It is indeed, yes. You know, Argentina are very patient, but uh, you're quite right. You get the impression they need to be hurting. Uh, as they were when they lost the goal to increase the pace to what might be called the normal style because it's very very lethargic everything patient deliberate and there's very little spark see that it's Bazile the coach is right on the edge of his technical area Mr Anna. looking to release Heinzer, the goalkeeper has provided the most telling pass of these last few minutes here's Cambiasa now Veron two to pick out inside the penalty area a fantastic hit from Veron thudded against the crossbar yeah great strike there looked as though uh, Casey Keller got a touch on that but uh, it was a fierce shot and he just got enough to touch it off the, onto the top of the crossbar, that's what we're looking for, more action like that, and uh, that's really the first save of the match for either goalkeeper, but a fine save by Keller. Terrific stop by Casey Cal. United States under even more pressure, and Keller has come to the rescue again. Excellent corner kick, driven to the front post. Good play by Crestwell coming across the first defender. Excellent stuff. Argentina, I think, trying to get something in the lead before they get at half time because they've certainly up the tempo. There's Veron. And by Matt. He's done well to pick out Johnson. Twelman alongside. Masturano across to cover. Yeah, twice recently Johnson got in that inside right position and amazingly with the pace he's got electing to turn back, hold it up and look for support when you know you get the impression had he gone on on his own and the last two occasions it might have given more threat to the Argentinian defence. It's only 23 Eddie Johnson but he's still one of the more experienced members of this United States squad. He went to the World Cup last summer and Reading have also had a, a look at him last two games in the MLS he's managed hat tricks in both scored three against the New York Red Bulls and then three more against New England first striker to do that in the MLS yeah and a very well taken penalty in this match which of course he earned himself Messi has now switched from right to left Heinzer looking for Crespa knocked away by Olsen they're on very assured now Zanetti who was overlooked for the World Cup last summer Lionel Scaloni who had a time with West Ham United got the nod from Jose Peckerman yeah, surprising the netty was omitted because uh, I've always thought he was a brilliant fullback, both defensively and in particular getting forward, strong, purposeful, aggressive forward runs. Trickery from Messi. coming at the end at the end of this first half it's been a good watch as well hasn't it Craig yeah good watch yes and uh, you know that one minute indicates no injuries good played in good spirits an open game I think a bit tame initially until the first goal went in but uh, things have livened up slightly but I think a draw is fair at half time it's a scoreline that few would have predicted what is in essence the United States second choice holding Argentina and testing Abundanziere yet again 
Kyle Haber with the shot. Yeah, good shot, but comfortably saved. From that distance, it should be saved. Uh, certainly at that height. So this was supposed to be easy for Argentina. It's proved otherwise. United States taking the lead from the penalty spot. A penalty by Eddie Johnson. Hernan Crespo there to get the equaliser for Argentina. And at half-time, it's Argentina 1, the United States 1. Many thanks, Rob. It has been a wonderful evening. What a game we've seen. Argentina 1, the United States 1 at half-time. And this, don't forget, a United States team bereft of the majority of their European stars. They were on duty for the Gold Cup. It's given several of the youngsters who are making their way through the MLS their chance. Eight from MLS teams in the starting line of this evening. Just one from the championship. Watford's Jay Demerit and two from the German Bundesliga, including their goalkeeper Casey Keller featuring for his country for the 101st time this evening. He won his 100th cap in the semi-final of the Gold Cup against Canada. Tim Howard came back for the final, but Howard now earning a deserved rest before he returns to England for pre-season training with Everton. This picture has been taken by broadcasters all over the world, so inevitably a slight delay before the referee, who is from Chile this evening, Carlos Chandia. It's the go-ahead to get the second half underway. Yeah, interesting to see the referee and his two assistants out waiting and the team's coming out. You know, normally, certainly, in England, the referee would ensure the teams are out and then he would come, but he's out there waiting on the sides. And Argentina, don't know whether it was deliberate or not, they kept the USA waiting for quite a considerable time before they emerged from the, the tunnel. And I wonder if Alfio Basile was, had a lot to say to them at half-time. I would think he would be saying, we must increase the tempo. Colombia were caught out at the start of the second half in their fixture against Paraguay. Paraguay going on to win 5-0 and they scored just 25 seconds into the second half of that one. Argentina endured such disappointment at the World Cup in Germany last summer, losing that penalty shootout against the hosts in the quarter-finals after their goalkeeper Roberto Abendanzieri had been injured during the course of the game. Argentina who missed out in the final of the Copa America three years ago when they were beaten by Brazil in a penalty shootout. Argentine squad were given a chance to have a breather following the end of the European seasons before they regrouped again in Buenos Aires for the Copa America. Amongst them Zanetti, who's in a championship in Italy with uh, Inter Milan. Argentine squad met up on the 15th of June. So they've had plenty of time really to prepare on the back of a couple of weeks off. How important is that, Craig, just to get people to, to have a bit of a breather on the back of a, a domestic season in Europe and time to... I think it's very important. I, I genuinely believe that uh, the long, arduous European season has caused a lot of teams to be weak here because the players have not been uh, included. And one, that's one reason, I'm sure, to give them adequate rest. You know, club managers are not delighted when players are away playing in this tournament. In the summer, we've heard that you know when the World Cup's on, managers complain about players being tired. And of course, this is another tournament, and many players from Europe are involved in this. That's when international coaches have to have a degree of understanding, and Bob Bradley has obviously had words with one or two of the European coaches, and just said, "I'll play your men in the Gold Cup, but I won't feature them in the." Copa America. It has given them a chance to have a look at one or two others, and they've performed well in this opening fixture against Argentina. Go, 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 go. And by Messi. And Mascherano looking again for Messi. This man's mopped up very well at the back. He's been sweeping exceptionally well behind uh, 
Jimmy Conrad and he started the second half in the same efficient manner as he played throughout the first half. Jimmy Conrad is now playing for the Kansas City Wizards. He has played in Europe. Time with uh, Lech Poznan in Poland. A bizarre choice of a European club, but these days it's how boots travel. Messi. Out of Kalman. Messi gets a second chance. He's unable to deliver the shot. Yeah, Messi very dangerous when he comes from that right side. It's quite fashionable these days to have uh, the left footed player on the right hand side and vice versa. And uh, Messi comes in extremely dangerously from the right. And Argentina, I think, very fortunate to have. I think out there they've got four left footed, natural left footed player Heinze, Cambiasso. Messi and uh, Milito, so that's unusual to have as many. It gives a good balance to the side. Here's Matt. Prepared to take on Zanetti. Mastorano. And Cambiasa. Riquelme. Crespo trying to get away from the debutant Marvel win. The Rock. It had been raised for an offside against Ernan Crespo then. Yeah, Crespo, he's got every chance to see right along that line there, but again, the USA holding the line very well. And a man of Crespo's experience, you might have thought he would have managed just to take a step out to stay onside. Zanetti. I'd say missed from the penalty spot during that shootout against Brazil three years ago. this country for the 110th time. Three players out there this evening with more than 100 caps. Zanetti and Ayala for Argentina and the United States goalkeeper, Casey Keller. Mascherano right in from behind there. You know, one of the few fouls in this match. It's been a very cleanly contested contest and great attitude from both sides. So he's almost finding himself in trouble then and he's Conceded the free kick as well, lapse of concentration, and it could prove costly this for Argentina. Absolutely good refereeing, that was undoubtedly a free kick. Zanetti going in rashly from the side and behind, and uh, the referee quite correctly, Carlos Campadilla from Chile, gave the free kick. The United States had a free kick in a similar position during the first half, and Filehaber shooting well wide. Map is also itching to have a go at that one. It looks as though Map is taking charge here. Well, this is certainly within shooting distance, no question of that. Interesting to see the structure of this wall. Many coaches have the tallest player at the outside of the wall, smallest than ever at the end. Quite a tall wall. So there's no need for a, a slope on it. Maps there, 12 minutes there, as is Filehaber. It is Map. Well, oh, it didn't threaten the goal that one, I'm afraid. The wall looked to be efficient. There was a synchronised jump 
from the Argentinians and uh, there wasn't the slightest prospect of that one hitting the back of the net. You know, interesting that, uh, you know, after his excellence with a penalty kick, that Eddie Johnson is not involved in taking these free kicks. Johnson should have been a sure five bet to score from the penalty spot. He scored three at the World Under-20 Championships four years ago. He's the Golden Shoe winner and managed four goals, three of them penalties. It's almost an award by default, isn't it? Here is Johnson. record at the moment is still intact. Bob Bradley unbeaten as the coach of the United States since taking over from Bruce Arena after a disappointing World Cup for the USA losing to the Czech Republic and Ghana and drawing as well with Italy. And the bloody encounter with Brian McBride getting his um, nose displaced. Yeah, things look so promising. You mentioned Poland earlier, but, you know, they played Poland in a friendly, which I saw in Kaiserslautern before the World Cup, and uh, the USA beat Poland. Clint Dempsey scored the only goal, and they looked to be a team which could threaten in the World Cup, but unfortunately for the USA, it just didn't materialise. minutes of the second half play then. Argentina struggling to find any real fluency. And it was nearly Crespo was in there behind Conrad. Yeah, clever ball from uh, Kelme over the top for Crespo coming in behind the defender but uh, just couldn't get a touch. A terrific ball curling into the path of Crespo. But as usual, Bobby Conrad was there. It was shepherding him, but he uh, just wondered if Crespo got a full touch on it, he might have had a different result. How long before Coco Bazile, the Argentine coach, considers changes? And when you look at what's available to him on the bench, he's got an embarrassment of riches, really. There's Pablo Aymar, there's Carlos Tevez, of course, Palacio, the Boca Juniors striker. Yeah, Gonzalez as well. You know, there's so many <laughs> options he has. And you know, I think when your team is uh, playing as they're playing, I think you've got to be proactive and say, let's freshen things up. We saw it like last night with Chile. We were 2-1 behind, but on two substitutes. Very early, one at half time, very early in the second half, and with 20 minutes to go, all three were on, and they came through to 1-3-2. So that's what a coach dreams about, get the three subs on, come from behind and win the match. Not worry about an injury, leaving your man short late in the game. dreams about it's certainly a scoreline which Bob Bradley in the United States would have dreamed about if they'd known that they would have been level at 1-1 just over 10 minutes into the second half and that after taking the lead from the penalty spot I think he's justifiably very proud of his side he must be because they, they've played to the game plan they've looked organized they're willing to be competitive and they although they, at the beginning they were very tentative they've taken the game it looks as though and the answers. Very good request. And time for the first change. Pablo Aymar is coming on. It was significant, perhaps, that Argentina had an 11 versus 11 training game on Tuesday, just before Brazile announced his team. And Cambiasso lasted just 30 minutes of that uh, that training ground warm up, and he was replaced by Pablo Aymar. That's a reckless challenge. There will be a yellow card, it is for Gabi Milito. Yeah, that was Milito coming into an uncomfortable position on the right-hand side of the fence with his left foot and a clumsy tackle. For Melita. Johnson and Twelman both wait. Oh, no. 
Dunbar, file Haber. Crespo back to help his defence out. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I think that great point there because, uh, you know, I, I love to see a striker who's prepared to come back and help out his defence. Batistuta, who used to play for this national side, was the classic example. Whenever a corner kick was lost, he sprinted back and he was first up to the halfway line when it was cleared. So I see Crespo's got the same work ethic. Here's Imar, just done as a substitute for Argentina, just trying to freshen things up a little bit. Imar with a, perhaps a little bit more pace and a bit more guile to try and open up this United States defence. Just look at the numbers of blue shirts they've got back at the moment. Here's Matt. Now Bornstein. File back. bundled over by Johnson talked about this being the tournament of surprises we saw that last night with Brazil being beaten in their opening fixture but this perhaps should the United States hold on would be an even bigger surprise and if they won, it would be a major shot. Crespo now. Here's Veron. Messi. Prepared to take on win. Zanetti again well fought. Argentina probing patiently. Riquelme. Messi once more. Messi goes on. It's Lionel Messi. Side netting. Yeah, wonderful bit of play there from Messi. He's now in his natural side on the left. He switched over and he did everything absolutely perfectly except the final shot. He's got to get that across Casey Keller. But the goalkeeper did exceptionally well, narrowing the angle and forcing him to hit it into the side netting. But to you know, a good spot of uh, electric play there from Argentina. That's more like what we expect from them. Messi was outstanding for Argentina in their final warm-up fixture against Algeria. Game that they won 4-3, scored two of the goals. Time now for the United States to make a change. And Olsen is going off. Yeah, Eddie Gaminon from Columbus Crew for his fourth international cap. Very young chap, only 20 years of age. So great for the USA coach to bring on a young guy to give him valuable experience against uh, one of the top teams in the world. Gavin made his international debut in that friendly fixture you mentioned earlier against Poland last year. Yeah, I was a privilege to see that match, and he did well. But he was even younger then, and uh, you know, he's it one of the most promising players in the USA, and quite clearly must be at age 20, finding a place in the national side. And at 20, is the youngest member of the squad, and it is a, a very youthful squad, this. Here's the United States substitute. Now Matt. up is Twelman. Yeah, it looked a good shot. The yellow boots they made comfortable contact there, but uh, it was blocked by Molito. Ron 
Sean always seems to have an angle for a pass. Here he is again. Yeah, but for most of the match, he's been so deep, and uh, you know, I would have thought at half time, might have been told both they on and McKelman get further forward. Lou Mascherano to do the sweeping up and get up and support the attack. Crowd again finding their voices when Messi has the ball. It's a terrific ball by Messi, and it's 2 1 now to Argentina, and it's a second for Ernan Crespo. Yeah, great finish again from Crespo. Messi laying it on for him. Messi's been much more influential when he's moved to the other side. On the left, probing it into the path of Crespo. And uh, this is more like the expected result. Oh, Keller unfortunate. It actually was almost driven through him. Yeah, through his legs. How often has Crespo done that? Two goals in this match. What a finisher he is. Goal number 34 for his country. Two this evening. And Argentina having been behind from the penalty spot. And now in front. United States. So determined, so workmanlike. So clearly eager to put on a good show here against the tournament favourites. How will they respond? How will they react? Here's Johnson. Clark. They're off. Oh no, he's taking a knock there. Crespo. Santa Cruz got a hat trick for Paraguay in the opening game this evening. And Crespo has managed two so far. Interesting to see if uh, Argentina get a penalty kick. I think we could anticipate who want to take it. against Algeria as Tevez was on the pitch from the start and he took it great pass that well Messi first class and first touch finish excellent I think a bit sorry for Casey Keller there the ball actually went through him but he was in good position to like perfect position to know the angle but it he was driven early before he got down and through his legs the second team in Group A, that's the group that includes Peru, Venezuela, Bolivia and Uruguay in the quarter-finals. Uruguay at the moment with the more impressive goal difference, 5-0 thumping of Colombia. Argentina now looking for further goals against the United States. Messi again trying to be the inspiration. Messi is denied. This Argentine team have suddenly sparked into life in the second half. Yeah, they have indeed, but uh, Bornstein did well, a saving tackle there because uh, it looked as though they were in danger of losing a third. Then Messi conceded the free kick. Argentina have won this tournament 14 occasions, the last time in 1993. Coach Coco Basile looking for a third success in the competition. Is now going off to the United States. Hello, 
Well, he's twenty years old. Second switch by Bob Bradley, the United States coach. You know that's quite amazing. You know another uh, youngster, only age twenty, his first appearance from Columbus Crew, Hercules Gomez. And uh, you know, all credit to the USA for putting two 20 year olds on in that second half. Maritou Boss have just got something on the ball then as Messi again threatened to sprint clear. Good challenge actually by the Watford man. Debutants this evening. Marvel win the second. On from the start. Hercules Gomez is the second switch that they've made. Striker who began his professional career in Mexico. Given his chance at the LA Galaxy by Frank Gallup, who's currently the coach of the team where. Lallis is the president. Yeah, Frank was a very efficient national coach of Canada, but now he's going to be in charge of David Beckham. Here's Barak. One shot. Well, uh, untroubled. Well, most unlikely shot in the first half, which Casey Keller had to tip onto the top of the crossbar. That was a weak one. Unlike Veron, leaning back on that and didn't get maximum contact. that Imar's introduction has made a difference. A bit more zip and a bit more pace. Yes, and it's allowed uh, Messi a bit more freedom. He's moved to the other side, to, to his natural left side of the front. And it's three up front now. There's little to do in the second half. You will doubtless be looking at the news stories coming out of Spain today, saying that uh, Fabio Capello is on his way from Real Madrid and Bernd Schuster, who's been in charge at Hatafi, is likely to take over. And he makes the Argentine goalkeeper when he returns to Spain for the next La Liga season. Messi will have Thierry Henry for company. Potent attacking combination. I would think so. Answer. Now Messi. His arm up. by fire labor Come on. Come on. Conrad has done a good job at the back alongside Jay Demerit Matt yeah, Matt's delivery there most uh, disappointing because it didn't get past uh, first there were two defenders there they had to give some elevation that one and get driven further across the face of the goal but uh, you know it was easily cut out Argentina have slipped to third in the world rankings behind Italy and Brazil they've been top even though they were beaten in the quarterfinals of the World Cup last summer by Germany Bornstein deemed to be bad enough to warrant a yellow card. Well, I think it's a harsh yellow card. But the uh, referee decided that, uh, you know, Bornstein was going for the ball, and as was Clark. First course of the tournament for Jonathan Bornstein. Anybody who picks up two yellow cards in the first phase will be suspended. 
We just wonder what they're going to create here. If we kick the first half open, the scoring for them, this will be very interesting. Maybe a bit of a right. It may well try a shot this time, but we'll certainly have something up the sleeve. What can the lazy magician produce here? In again by Raquel May. Well gathered by Keller. Well, same again. I know it's amazing that uh, the USA hadn't learned from the first one. Had that been slightly lower, it was a certain goal because, you know, we see that... Uh, the opportunity was there, a wonderfully worked free kick, but it was exactly the same, and uh, I don't think the USA had learned from the experience of the first one. Since the United States are making good progress, though, because of the structure which is in place and the players which are currently available to Bob Bradley, the new coach, They've focused on the game at youth level. It's always been good in the, well played in the schools at least, and at under 17 and under 20 level, the United States have always been strong, but perhaps at senior level, they've, they've lacked the level of competition in the, in the Central American zone. And yeah. it's competitions like this which gives them the chance to, to make further progress. To get yeah, better, it's absolutely. I, I agree totally with you. Know the college structure is good, and uh, you know the MLS is improving, and the signings of Beckham, uh, fantastic. But uh, you know the, the coaching, the coach education is excellent in the USA. The National Soccer Coaches of America do well. Uh, last week I was in Ireland, and the uh, man in charge of Englishman Jeff Tipping, he was over giving a talk in Ireland about the USA way, and then going to the. FA course and, and then over to Germany so he's everywhere in Europe picking up information and imparting it to the coaches in America and we see the, the, the fine rewards and there's one of the outstanding coaches in America the national coach Rod, uh, Bob Bradley who may well be in danger of losing his unbeaten record tonight that says 11 games unbeaten since Bob Bradley took over Let's not forget that so many of his star European players are not in Venezuela for this tournament. You know, these two experienced guys at the back, Demerit and Conrad, have done exceptionally well holding the shape of the back four. And uh, the number of times uh, Argentina have been offside, I think, reflects the excellence of their coordinated defensive play. It's more Copa America football on Saturday evening. Bolivia versus Uruguay from Group A. That's at 8.30. That's the first of two fixtures in Group A on Saturday. The second one is the host Venezuela against Peru was so impressive against Uruguay in their opening fixture. That's Saturday at 8.30 on Sky Sports 1. Raquel May. Lito has brought the on the bench this evening. Diego. Leimar is also Brils Aragotha. This is Veron. And Messi. Carlos Tevez is poised to come on as a substitute here now for Argentina. There is no respite for this United States defence. <laughs> when you've got Tevez in the bench, you know, it tells you the quality in the squad. Fabulous pass that by Veron. Crespo. Here's Anse. Oh, the goal! Fabulously taken by Pablo Aymar. Brilliant play from Argentina. United States totally opened up. And it's the substitute Aymar who's made it 3-1. Super move from start to finish. That was a fantastic goal. Wonderful play down the left. Great delivery and a powerful header. Back of the net. Great substitution, obviously, from the coach. Aymar, no chance at all for Casey Keller and he came from a deep position edge of the box bulleted that header behind Keller and a fantastic goal great play no wonder he's smiling and uh, you know you just 
look to the bench now and you see Tevez and you, if you're a USA player, supporter, you say, what's going to happen next? It's difficult not to underestimate what the United States have done here to take the lead and to hold Argentina for so long. And listen to the roars that Lionel Messi is getting from the Argentine supporters as he goes off now. He's been allowed to get a short breather before the United States, uh, Argentina are next in action. And here comes Carlos Tevez. Still officially with West Ham United. There's a story in one of the English newspapers today saying that he might be staying on at West Ham if they can find £9 million as part of a loan deal. Further change by the United States. They've brought on Carl Beckerman now. Ricardo Clark has gone off. Now yeah, Beckerman on for his second international cap. He's a bit older than the other two substitutes. You know, he's almost a veteran in this team at age 25. States to crumble. Will they get back into this game? Should they resolve during the first half? Press plenty forward. You know what Jade Merrick can do from set piece situations. Should have been another free kick to uh, the United States. The referee says play on. Tevez eager to make an impact. Denied by the merit. Argentina at the World Cup in the summer scored a goal after 26 passes. Cambiasso, the scorer, then against. Serbia and Montenegro and after Cambiasa went off tonight it was Pablo Aymar who came on and he's made it 3-1 now to Argentina after a move of 22 passes that says something about the quality regardless of the opposition yeah and the final two passes in the front third on the left hand side absolutely superb the delivery was magnificent and as was the finishing header so that's a goal of outstanding quality we've seen a number in this tournament but uh, if any better than that one. Favourites have taken a bit of time to find their feet in this opening fixture. They're on. The languid, almost lazy crossfield pass. He has now found his range, Veron. Take charge. His comrade Johnson, who gave the United States the lead from the penalty spot. Beckham on as a substitute. Now Matt. Gomez. Yeah, what a fine goal that was. That was a classic. That's again a training ground crossing and finishing. The cross was perfect, the finish was exquisite there from Aymar. Wonderful play. Yeah, there's 
no joy for Mapp as he tries to get beyond Zanetti. Giving away by Einstein. Violator. Born in Brazil of Austrian parents. His gap. Back him in. I would say, Tony, no disgrace uh, for this young experimental USA side because the match is ending up as anticipated with uh, Argentina in complete control but uh, for an hour or so USA did uh, very well and I think uh, coach Bob Brackley although suffering his first defeat will be proud of his players Stadium when the United States took the lead. And here come Argentina again. It's Carlos Tevez. Super finish from Tevez. Excellent finish. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to see it again. I thought he looked offside, but uh, he was clear. On that high line that uh, the USA have been playing, you know, as the legs get weary, uh, two central defenders caught out there. Tevez, fresh leg, substitute on, and uh, what a wonderful finish. twice the Latin footballer of the year on as a second half substitute here for Argentina and like another of the substitutes Pablo Aymar has been able to find the back of the net beyond Casey Callum yeah and he was onside there he timed his run very very well that was an example of uh, the Americans being caught out playing so flat so high and he came off the shoulder uh, there of Bornstein and stuck it away brilliantly Come Argentina again. Once more, it's Tevez on the ball. Tevez goes on. And that's perhaps rather selfish. Yes, acknowledging, I think, his selfishness. Uh, you know, he is a, a striker who wants to be selfish, and all the good strikers are. But uh, the preferred option would have been a ball across the face of the goal for Crespo. when the United States took the lead. Argentina made another change, Baron has gone off. Opportunity to give him a little bit of a breather before their next fixture. The Gago has come on in his place. Yeah, the youngsters are getting a chance in this match. Uh, Diego, only 21 years of age, young Real Madrid player. I uh, haven't seen a lot of him, but uh, I'm told he's absolutely outstanding. Just, uh, Real Madrid, a lot of money when they signed him in January from Boca Juniors. when they were beaten by Deportivo La Coruña at the start of this year. That was a precision finish, if ever there was one. Absolutely perfect. And he's very happy. I think uh, he scored a few like that himself. He would approve of the goals which Argentina have scored this evening. 
the one that Pablo Aymar put in. 22 pass move, which produced the third goal for Argentina. Before the game, I think if anybody had looked at the two teams, they would have said that this would have been comfortable for Argentina, and it has proved to be that way, but certainly for the best part of an hour or so, well, it is essentially a, a United States MLS team. Put up a very good show against the favourites for this Copa America. The conditions perhaps better than they were for the first game. The, breeze which was blowing from left to right across the stadium seems to have eased yes everything that I've seen in this tournament the Copa America from Venezuela has been good in terms of conditions uh, the pitches have been immaculate uh, multiple ball system used in most, most games because we have here a track around the pitch and even when there hasn't been a track the ball has been returned very quickly try and keep the pace of the game up and it's been a good spectacle so far on the Copa America the focus for Argentina will be qualification for the next World Cup in South Africa in 2010 it's a qualifying campaign which begins in the autumn and the coach Basile is unhappy that the Argentine Federation have done a deal with a a Russian rights holder who apparently have bought the contract to a number of games. It means that Argentina will have to play 24 friendlies over a five-year period. And there's a stipulation that at least seven of the squad of 20 will have to be established internationals. As a former international coach yourself, can you understand his concerns? Yes, I can indeed. You know, of course, as this is commercial and the sponsors are beginning to dictate things. I think that's been the case with Brazil. They have to play a set number of friendly matches to justify the huge sponsors or income they get. Argentina's last two friendlies were both in Europe, win against Algeria. They drew as well against Switzerland. Before that, there was a, an entirely South American based team who drew 0 0 with Chile back in March. This man's made a big impression since he's come on. You talk about impact substitutions. You can't get a better impact than heading a powerful goal not long after being introduced to the action. Nicky Haas on the United States should Argentina now get a fifth goal. Yeah, Paraguay really? having put five past Colombia earlier this evening. No, they wouldn't deserve that. Floated in by the Calma. Crespo challenging there with the merit. Two minutes, second half stoppage time have now been played. It's Conrad who's down. I can't recall the physiotherapist been on this match and be surprising he's on now. A good header there by De Mera. And they're back on his feet, seeing stars, if not stars and stripes. So pushing inside the penalty area. I'm not entirely sure if the ball didn't go out of play and then come back into play, but Casey Keller is bringing it forward a yard or two. And that is it. Argentina, who struggled during the first half and went behind. Eddie Johnson scoring from the penalty spot for the United States. But Bob Bradley has suffered defeat in his 12th international in charge of the United States. The favourites, Argentina, are on their way. Most impressive in the second half. And it's finished Argentina 4, the United States 1.